we're going to begin with some definitions and units. First, displacement, right? This is going to be delta x. This triangle right here is delta. It is a Greek letter. It means change. Generally, delta also means slope. So slope is a change in something. In this case, displacement is going to be the final minus the initial. You'll notice these subscripts right here. This little f means final, and this little i means initial. The unit for displacement, the traditional unit is going to be a meter. Of course, it could be anything like a kilometer, a centimeter. It could be an inch. It could be a mile. But we're not going to use any of those. We're going to stick to metric, and the traditional will be meter. If it's not meter, you might have to convert it. Next, velocity, delta v. Right, the change in velocity is going to be delta x over delta t. Okay, this time, time, right? The unit for time is going to be in seconds. You'll notice the, I typed it up this way, but it should be really meter over second. Because in the numerator, you have a meter. In the denominator, you have a second. The unit for velocity is going to be a meter over second. Acceleration is a change in velocity. So you'll notice that velocity was a change in displacement with respect to time. Acceleration is a change in velocity with respect to time. So it's almost like each one goes behind, goes back to the previous one to redefine it. Acceleration is going to be the change in velocity over the change in time. Doing that, you know that velocity is a meter over second, and time is a second. So if, we're going to, if we were to go ahead and do this, and then keep flip change, you would come to the conclusion that this is a meter per second squared. You are very uh, well aware at this point that accelerations units are meter per second squared. That is also the unit for gravity, which is a type of acceleration. There's an extra blank right here. We do have another formula for acceleration that may come in handy. Notice how it's delta V over delta T, but delta V by definition is delta X over delta T. So if I were to go ahead and replace that, right? Acceleration is delta V over delta T. But instead of a delta V, I were to replace this with this fraction. If I do the keep flip change thing, I'm going to end up getting delta X over delta T squared. These deltas, right? These changes. Delta is change. They require two, po two points. You notice that there's always a final Could you say that again? again what if you don't have two points? What if you just have one point? Well, then you get instantaneous velocity. It's going to be x over t. Acceleration would be v over t. So it would just be the exact number, the exact value that I have at that moment. Motion graph. This is a displacement versus time. This is an x versus t. And it's very important that we are aware of the units. So consider for a moment that even though it's a displacement versus time graph, that if I take the slope, I would get uh, meter over second, which is velocity. Let's look at some of these questions here. At exactly three seconds, at exactly three seconds, how far did the bicyclist uh, display? So here we are at three seconds, right? At zero seconds, the bicyclist hadn't moved yet. At one, they had traveled this much. At two, they had traveled this much. At three, they had traveled this much. So at exactly three seconds, the bicyclist went ahead and had traveled 10 meters. How much did the bicyclist displace between 9 and 10 seconds? So we have to notice something here. If I'm going from each second that goes by, you'll notice that the bicyclist is displacing, right? They are leaving the, the starting point. So even at four, I mean, they're not displacing as much, but they still are displacing. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. And okay, now here we are at nine. Here's our initial. Here's our final. You'll notice that if we're looking only between nine and 10 seconds, that it for this displacement versus time graph, it actually didn't, doesn't have a slope, right? There is no slope. If we were to do the math, that's 15 minus 15 is zero. So whether you want to look at it geometrically based on the graph or mathematically, what actually happened between nine and 10 seconds and this is that this person was at rest. There was no movement. The average velocity, so we're going to go ahead and use these formulas, right? And look, look what's happening here. You're seeing all this fancy stuff, but really, it's a slope. Remember, slope is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. I'm proposing to you that velocity is x final minus x initial over t final minus t initial. It's the same thing. We just change the 2s to f's and the 1s to i's. There's a minus and there's a division. So from 0 to 3 seconds, that means that I'm going to start here and go to here with my time. 
right? There's your three, here's your zero. On the X, the displacement, I'm going from 10 up here to zero over here. Remember, you're, you're breaking this apart. So you're looking at how, at the rise, right? How much did you rise? 10 with how much you ran? Three. With the second part, we're looking at zero to 10 seconds, the entire thing. So we start here and we end here. What about all the points in between, Mr. Over? What about the very slopes? It doesn't matter because it's an average. It's an average. Okay, it's not an exact picture. It's an average. It's a summary of what happened during this time frame. So again, we look at this right here, 10 corresponds to 15 meters. At zero, it corresponds to zero. 10 seconds right here. And of course, the time was zero originally. For your summary, what does the slope of a displacement versus time graph represent? Here's our next graph. Notice this no longer is displacement versus time. We will always, almost always, at least in this class, have time be the x-axis. But you'll notice that this time our y-axis changed. It became velocity. All right, so be careful with how to read this. Furthermore, you'll notice that this time there are positives and negatives. We generally will not have negative time because that would be time travel. All right, during what time intervals is this object traveling at a constant velocity? So on the previous graph, this region was a region of constant displacement, meaning that you weren't moving, you were, you were stuck in one spot. So consider that anything that doesn't have a slope, where the slope would be, would be zero, that would be a region of constant velocity. So notice from zero to 0 0.75, here from three to six, and here from six to seven. Those three regions have no slope. They have a slope of zero and they are regions of constant velocity, which means everything else would be a change in velocity, a form of acceleration. Now remember, this is a velocity versus time graph. And anytime we have a slope, whether positive or negative, for a velocity versus time graph, this implies some form of acceleration. Now, let's look at what happens in this region right here. We originally were going at one meter per second, but as time went on, this velocity got less and less and less. So it was at one, then maybe 0.75, then 0.5. And then when we hit this second right here, we're at zero meters per second. Conceptually, what this is saying is that we began at one meter per second and over time it got slower to the point where it became zero and we stopped. So because we got slower during this region, this is deceleration. Now, if we're at zero at this point, what happens as time goes on? Well, we're actually speeding up in a negative velocity, right? So we started at zero and now it's negative one and now it's negative two at this point. So in a weird twist of events, we are speeding up, right? We are changing our velocity. It is increasing, but it's increasing negatively. So you're going to actually get a negative acceleration out of this, but it is speeding up. So as weird as it sounds, it, this area is acceleration. But then again, look what happens. So we're going at negative two meters per second. And you're wondering what could that look like? That could look like us putting the car in reverse and just driving in reverse. But then we go ahead and decide, okay, negative two is too fast. So we, as time goes by, we get lower, right? Negative one, we get lower. And then we get to the point where we hit zero again, which means at this time, right? We hit a velocity of zero, which means that we stopped again. So this region is deceleration because we slow down. We slow down back to zero. If we were driving the car in reverse, we decided to apply the brakes and slowly come to a stop driving in reverse. And now we are at zero and we're going to go ahead and speed up again. We started at zero meters per second and then as time went on, it increased to one and then two meters per second at this point. And then we stayed constant two meters per second after that. So this region right here is acceleration because we're speeding up again. 
So between three and six seconds, I would have to go ahead and find the area of the shape. So what we have here is uh, the area. In this case, would be the velocity times the time. I should do delta V times delta T. Remember, we want how much it displaced. Notice something interesting here, that if we had uh, delta V is equal to delta X over delta T, if I want to get the X by itself, I'd multiply both sides by delta T. So what we're looking at is looking at uh, V final minus V initial times T final minus T initial. The final velocity is looking like 2 down here in this shape. It's 0. T final is 6 seconds. T initial is 3 seconds. You'll notice that the seconds cancel out left of the meter, six meters. Now, you didn't have to do all that, right? You could just simply have counted all these, right? Here's one square, two square, three square, four square, five square. And if you recognize your units, six meters, you're done. So don't forget how area plays a role. So notice something that with the velocity versus time graph, hint, left column idea, for a velocity versus time graph, the area is the displacement. Now, the next question to you is gonna be, what would the acceleration be? How do I find the acceleration. Remember, this is a velocity versus time graph. The funny thing about it is that it tells you the displacement and it can also tell you the acceleration, even though it's called velocity versus time. So let's look at the let's look at the acceleration between two and three seconds from here to here. So from two to three seconds, right? We went ahead and set this up. We have two meters per second minus a negative because this was a negative two. Okay, so remember the formula itself has a built-in minus, but in our problem we also happen to have a negative two. That gives you a positive four. And then in the bottom, we have three seconds minus two seconds, that's one second. For a velocity versus time graph, if you want the displacement, find the area. If you want the acceleration, find the slope. At what instance is the velocity zero? Well, we got one right here at one second, one here at 2.5 seconds, and one right here at seven seconds. This is, we're gonna return back to displacement versus time. No numbers this time, we have different regions. Recall, for example, when it flat lines, that means the displacement is constant. And then if there's a slope, then it's moving. So we know this would have a velocity between two and three. And between four and five, there would also be a velocity. But it's going downwards. So this probably would be a negative velocity. Let's, let's, look, let's look at the questions. Between which two regions is the car traveling with a constant positive velocity? Oh, well, there you go. How do we know? Because it has a slope and it has an upward slope. Remember, this is only true for displacement versus time. Velocity versus time is different. When is it traveling with a negative constant, negative constant velocity? Well, again, straight line, right? Not a, not a horizontal, but one with the, with the slope. But this one is going downward. So between four and five. Between which three regions is the card accelerating? Well, this is fascinating. So on a displacement versus time graph, if you end up having a curve, like a parabola or an exponential, then what you're looking at is acceleration. And of course, as we already noted, it's not moving between three and four because it is a horizontal uh, slope, right? It's zero. It's a slope of zero. What does the slope of a displacement time graph represent? What does the area of a velocity time graph represent? What does the slope of a velocity time graph represent? Great job, everybody!